week, the Trends in International Mathematics and Science Study was released, and it was distressing to say the least. Dr. Vijay Reddy from the Human Sciences Research Council presenting highlights of the report, revealing that South Africa's performance in maths and science was among the lowest of the participating countries that were surveyed. And uh, we are now joined by Dr. Reddy. Dr. Reddy, good afternoon to you and uh, welcome. What is it that pupils are not getting or are not doing when it comes to mathematics and science? We all know that this is not a new problem. Absolutely. Good afternoon, Jeremy. I think in, in, in describing the results, one can use different reference points. Of the 39 countries that participated at the grade nine level, South Africa was at the lower end. And that's to be expected because we're competing amongst South, uh, East Asian countries, European countries, the USA, et cetera. And, and so that, that's, in a sense, we, we're playing in a very big league. On the other hand, the important thing for me and as a policy researcher is to look at is how has South Africa done over time? As you said, this is the trends in international mathematics and science study. And from 2003, uh, the, the, sorry, this study is conducted every four years. And from 2015 to 2019, we improved by 17 points for mathematics and 12 points for science. And more importantly, from 2003, we started with very low levels of mathematics and science skills. At that time, 10% or one in 10 learners could demonstrate that the basic ability to, in mathematical knowledge and science. Currently, it stands at 40%. So there's been an increase uh, over time, and that's the uh, good news story. The cautionary news is that um, South Africa has a very industrialized economy. It requires high skills in especially math, science, and technology. And we need to accelerate the pace of change in order to meet the needs of society and the labor market. All right, we'll certainly welcome any improvement, but as you say, off an initial uh, very low base. Is it simplistic to say that our inability to get this right, and particularly to understand the basics, is simply as a result of bad teaching? I'm, I'm sure, uh, Dr. Reddy, there's more to it than that. Absolutely, Jeremy. I think it's a, especially, it, there's a multitude of reasons for it. And as we all well know, we could describe the educational system into two parts. In the fee-paying schools, which has, and they have performed much better than learners in no fee-paying schools. And the, in, in the no-fee schools, uh, where learners come from home conditions that are less than conducive to, uh, uh, to learning. They also have large classes, poor teaching, uh, the language skills are, are less in terms of accessing the, the, the knowledge. Mm. And so that is the context. But despite that, we have to keep working at trying to improve this. And two things that we suggested, which are non-resource based uh, in, uh, strategies that we can use. Uh, remember in this COVID environment, there's not going to be more resources, especially financial resources to use. The one thing is that we saw that our learners cannot write. They cannot write a sentence. Uh, they, um, the, sorry, majority of learners don't have good writing skills. They can't write a sentence or a paragraph or an explanation. And if within the school curriculum, in all schools, we can encourage writing, at the moment the department has a reading strategy, and to extend that to a reading and writing strategy. And by writing, especially explanations, it will just ensure higher cognitive learning. The other thing that we suggested is that the TIMS uh, assessment is a difficult one. Two thirds of the assessment are high levels, uh, require high level reasoning and application. And the South African curriculum has one third of its items with high level uh, thinking and uh, reasoning skills. 
If we can shift the balance from the classroom to the systemic assessments, to the national assessments, that then signals to learners and educators and, every, and parents and everyone involved in the educational enterprise that this is the expectation that we have of learners. In other words, we need to raise the bar in terms of what we expect learners to be able to do, what we expect educators to do. All right, uh, Dr. Reddy, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for the explanation. Dr. Vijay Reddy from the Human Sciences Research Council. Remember that uh, direct correlation between mathematics and science and uh, our ability to remain competitive in this global economy.